In 2015, David Ongi was wanted by the police for the murder of Vinnie Waddington. He was only aged 24 when he went missing, and nearly seven years later, police have arrested him in Spain, and he's definitely grown up a bit. He was arrested by the National Crime Agency last week for his suspected role in the murder of an 18-year-old in Liverpool. Two other men would be convicted of the murder, and they were sentenced to life in prison. But David fled the country less than 24 hours after the murder, and he never stood trial. Spanish police said that on May the 6th, Ungi was arrested inside a gym in Malaga and officers found a Ruger firearm and ammunition in a rucksack. They also raided a premise nearby, arrested two other men and found a load of other guns and drugs associated to him. And the video footage released by the Spanish police shows them taking him into custody and also showing off everything they seized in relation to the raids. <laughs> David was under investigation for supplying heroin in the Liverpool area at the time of the murder of Vinnie as well. And detectives said that a 12-gauge shotgun was used to fire from the passenger window of an Audi A3 that three men were travelling in. They rammed Vinnie off a motorbike before they shot him dead. Two of the car's occupants, Luke Kendrick and Ryan Bate, are already serving life sentences and they were convicted in 2016. When police found Vinnie in Garston, Merseyside on July the 14th, 2015 at 8.45pm, the motorbike was still underneath the car. The car that was there was registered to Luke Kendrick. And there was also several witnesses that said they'd seen three men, one with a shotgun, run away from the scene for an industrial estate. Due to the car being registered to Luke, the police then went to arrest him at his home. Following further inquiries, they located him at his sister's address and he made a confession on body cam without knowing they said that he was being recorded. These kids today, pull them up on crosses, put them up on me, put them set on me. And um, they must have been having a good <laughs> laugh at me then. Ah, we Why? just said it. We, we, we just said it. Ah, well, look, 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 look what's happened on me. You're dead. Ha, 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 ha. They said in court that he said to his sister, I hit them off the bike, Tina. They both jumped up off the floor, ran into gardens and started jumping over back gardens. That was the last I've seen of them. And the police said this was only information the killer would know. Vinnie had been shot in the chest and he managed to make his way over gardens, but died shortly after from the injuries. Ryan Bates was sentenced to 24 years and Kendrick was jailed for a minimum of 25 years. But David Ungi was seen on CCTV leaving the country very soon after the murder and was never stand trial. Vinnie Waddington's dad would later be convicted of selling drugs and he stood trial and the jury actually got tearful when they heard of his son's murder. He said in open court, do you want brutal honesty? I'm going to catch the people that killed my son and that's what I want. I want revenge and I've said it in open court. This was in reference to how long it had taken for the police to locate David due to the fact that he was one of the most wanted on the list and also a dangerous criminal. David Ongi Jr. had a high profile in Liverpool and this was mainly due to his father, David Ongi Sr. He was shot dead in 1995 in a still unsolved murder. He was killed in the Dingle community and this is where he grew up and this sparked, they said in Liverpool media, a gangland feud that went on for several years. He was 36 years old when he was shot dead and his assassination was widely said to have been a gangland hit, even though he was a successful businessman in the local area. The dad of three had already been shot at earlier on in the year and on the day of his death, he was driving down North Hill Street when a black VW Golf GTI pulled up in front of him and a man opened fire with an automatic weapon. He was hit twice and he died at the scene. And of course, David Ungi Sr. would have grown up in the shadow of his father's reputation. It was reported at the time that this was one of the bloodiest months in Liverpool history, and the days that followed, seen a shooting at a Kensington gym and also a murder. Armed police patrolled the streets of Tuxturf and five people were injured in two shootings in the weekend on May the 20th and 21st. They were among 10 shootings that occurred in 22 days. And special measures were brought in by the police in Tuxturf, Dingle and the city centre areas. And normal patrol police even wore bulletproof vests. 
One person would stand trial for the murder of David's father, John Phillips, who was 33 years old. They said in the newspapers at the time that he was an associate of the drugs baron, Curtis Warren, and he appeared in court charged with the attempted murder of David Ungi. And the prosecution argued that there was a feud between Phillips and the Ungi family over a local pub in the area that David's dad had owned. There was rumours that this led to a straightener and Mr Ungi won the fight and they believed this led to the shooting. But in a turn of events, this case would later be dropped and a year on, Phillips was shot at four times, but he survived and later died of a heart attack. And the latest on this story is that Spanish police have approved the extradition and David should be back in the UK very shortly. I'm not sure what they do in relation to the offences that he's committed in their country because he's been caught with a firearm and also drugs as well. So I'm not sure if they're going to be added to his sentence or if they're just going to trial him for murder. So I really appreciate you joining me for this story and don't forget to follow me online as well for Q&A questions on TikTok and also Instagram. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.